Hello, Randall Standridge here. You might notice something a little bit different about me right now. Those of you that follow me on Facebook might have seen in the past few days that I posted that I was going to have surgery. So I'm starting a recovery vlog about the experience because it's going to be a process going forward from that surgery to a full recovery. And I kind of wanted to detail what happened, how it's going to affect my composition career, and just kind of my outlook on the process that is you know, laid out before me. So before I get to that, those of you that put well wishes on Facebook, you know, get well, we hope the surgery goes well, you know, thoughts and prayers, good energy sending your way. I do want to give a special shout out to you. Sometimes you post stuff like that. I've done it myself and you don't know how it affects that person. But I can tell you that for me, I was feeling pretty dark uh, the day going into the surgery and that really brightened my day. Um, so thank you for doing that. Those of you that took the time out, to send me a message, post on my wall, or anything about, you know, good luck, we're thinking of you. It really made a huge difference in my attitude and my energy going into the surgery. So thank you. Thank you a lot for that. So what happened? Well, those of you that know me know that I'm a little bit of a fitness nut. And long story short, about three weeks ago, I was doing a deadlift and I just did bad technique. I was supposed to leave my arms relaxed. I tensed them. I heard a snap and a pop and a sound like carpet ripping. My bicep changed shape and suddenly I couldn't hang on to anything anymore. And I knew there was a problem. Me and my trainer looked at each other and we were like, this is not good. It didn't really hurt though and that was the weird thing. It would only hurt like if I tried to lift something, but just like stationary, it didn't hurt. Regardless, I went to the doctor and he suggested I get an MRI, which I did. Took about a week to get the MRI back, and then uh, when he looked at the results, he said I might want to take it to a uh, orthopedic surgeon, which I did. I took it to Dr. Brandon Bird here in Jonesboro at the uh, St. Bernard Orthopedic Center, and we looked at it, and uh, he decided he told me that I had ruptured the distal tendon on my left arm. What that is, that's the tendon that uh, you feel like when you bend your elbow, um, the tendon that like lifts up in the middle. That's uh, that's the tendon that we're talking about. And it had um, torn away from my bone for 1.6 centimeters. So not totally severed, but enough away where, like, you know, when you do that, you can feel that tendon. You couldn't feel my tendon because it was so relaxed. It was basically just like a loose noodle laying against my elbow. Fun, huh? So he's, he told me that, you know, he would suggest surgery. And I agreed because... You know, I want to be at full strength. I don't want to have a weak arm. He said, you know, you could choose not to have the surgery. You're just going to have a weak arm for the rest of your life. And I was like, nope, not an option. So we scheduled surgery, which occurred two days ago. I had surgery on Monday the 19th. And uh, we're two days out now into recovery. And that's kind of where we are. To give you a description of what the surgery, what they did actually, they and they're, I, I'm going to include a, either a link or something in the comments below to uh, a video of the actual repair of the day. Apparently this repair is pretty a pretty common procedure, especially for people in their 40s and up. Thank you very much, as if I didn't feel old enough. But uh, anyway, they make a small incision in your arm close to the uh, bend of the elbow, and they basically sever the, the part of the tendon that was connected, the part that's torn up, pull the rest of the tendon down, and attach it to the bone via a some metal thread and a metal um, anchor that they drill into the bone and clamp down. So they're basically just creating a new connection for the tendon. So that's what they did to me. You can see the animation below, and I promise it is animation. I'm not going to put anything gory on my page, but if you want to, if you're kind of interested in what exactly they did, you can look that up. Now, if you want to see something gory, I made the mistake of watching a video that, you know, it's, it's a, like a real life demonstration of the uh, surgery they did. And I was like, no, 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 no. Um, so not the smartest choice on my part, but it is what it is. So on Monday, I went in for surgery and uh, everything went well. Because I had the surgery done relatively quickly after the injury, the surgery only took 25 minutes. Um, I, I did have to be anesthetized or under anesthesia, however the right way to say that is, for the surgery, which incidentally, that was the only thing I was scared of. Like, they told me they were going to have to cut my arm open, you know, sever my tendon, do all this. I was perfectly fine with that. They tell me, oh, and we're going to have to put you under anesthesia, because I was thinking they were just going to give me a local, let me watch some TV, and just take care of it. But no, they, they put you under, and that was actually what freaked me out. 
I have a completely irrational fear of anesthesia. I realize it's irrational, so nobody needs to get on my comments and be like, hmm, you know, Standridge, that's irrational. I know it is, and I actually think that makes it worse because it makes you feel stupid. I felt totally stupid. It was like, I'm scared of this. I know I shouldn't be scared of it, but there it is. So once I got past that fear, I mean, the rest of it was pretty fine. And apparently when I woke up from the anesthesia, the attending nurse who stayed with me while I was recovering said basically one moment I was, you know, dead out asleep, and then the next moment I was up and talking to her and I would not shut up. Those of you that know me know I like to talk a lot. Um, and to my credit, she did say I was perfectly lucid. I don't remember any of this because uh, the other thing about anesthesia is it gives you, you know, short-term amnesia you know, around the times of being put under and waking up. Probably a blessing, but um, anyway, so I don't remember that conversation. But the nurse said I was quite loquacious upon waking up. So anyway... We're two days into recovery now. I don't have a lot of pain. I mean, I can't move the arm right now. I'm not supposed to move the arm because we're letting the bone and the tendon heal and infuse and, and connect with each other. So I'm basically just supposed to keep it still. I'm in a half cast. Uh, my arm is wrapped very tightly into it. And like, if I do need to lift it, I, need, I have to support it with my other hand and make sure I'm not activating the bicep and do, you know, kind of like that, like if I ever need to move it around. So... Not the worst thing that could have happened. Um, the only downside to all this is the recovery process is gonna take a while because once I'm out of this cast, which should be in about two or three weeks, I'll be in a limited mobility cast and I'll have to start physical therapy to stretch out the tendon, build up the muscles around it you know, that were injured during the surgery and uh, just basically recover. Uh, this process can take two to three months until I'm able to like really like lift things again. And even then I'll still be a little weak they said about six months until I'm like quote unquote normal um, and about a year until you are able to improve from that. So that's what I've got ahead of me and I'm just pretty realistic about it. I'm like, okay, this is how it is. You know, because there's a lot, sometimes you can't help how you react to things, but sometimes you can. Um, in this situation, I could have a very negative reaction. I could be like, oh, this is so terrible, poor me. Um, you know, oh, this is going to wreck so many things, but I'm not going to approach it that way. The only thing, thing I can do is try to get better from here, and that's what I'm going to do. So that's why I'm going to do this uh, recovery vlog. Hopefully some of you will find it inspiring. Hopefully some of you, if you've been through an injury like this, or might be going through physical therapy yourself, maybe this will just let you know you're not alone. Or if you're just a fan of my co compositions, um, as I do the vlogs, I mean, I'm going to be talking about my composition career and everything else going on with my life. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. If nothing else, it might be a little bit entertaining. Um, so anyway, we're two days back. I've already been back to the gym once. You can see 10 Fitness. That's the gym I go to. Thank you very much. I did 20 minutes of walking today um, at a you know, kind of incline because I didn't want to bounce this around too much. So I mainly just focused on walking today to get, to get something going and a little bit of training on the right side just to get the right side of the body active. So from here, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Probably a lot of legs, probably a lot of uh, abs. Uh, right side as strong as I can keep it and that's all I can do at this point. So how is this going to affect my composing career? Well I am a two-handed composer. What I mean by that is when I use Finale which is my main program to write music I typically enter things two-handed. I'll have one hand on the keyboards and one hand on the mouse going back and forth. At least for the next three to four weeks I won't be able to do that. So I'm gonna have to change the way I write and I'm actually kind of excited about this. Sometimes it's really easy to get stuck in a rut and you know, get used to the way you do things. And this situation, the one positive I'll say, is it's going to force me out of my comfort zone. I've already decided that I'm going to write a lot of things freehand, like on staff paper, to make sure I've got it like I want it before I even touch Finale. Because I, with this slowing me down like that, I, I don't have time to waste. I won't have time to waste like trying to figure out what I want and experimenting on Finale. I'm going to need to know what I want and then put it in. So that's going to be different from how I usually do things, and I'm just going to approach it with excitement and positivity because this could change the way I write in a good way. Um, so that's that's how I'm going to you know approach it. As far as like how much it will slow me down, um, keeping in mind that I'm a full-time composer and I usually have between eight to ten hours a day to write. Typically, on a typical day, I'll get between seventy to hundred measures written. Um, in a day, 
this will probably slow me down to between, I'm going to say, you know, worst case scenario, 30, 30 to 32 measures to maybe about 48, 50 measures a day. So it'll slow me down a little bit, but um, I still think I'll be able to manage, you know, everything that I'm doing. Uh, I'm just going to have to be very proactive about it. So I do have some commissions and things coming up. I still fully intend to meet those because one thing you never tell us standards like me, my brothers, my daddy, my, you never tell us we can't do anything because we will spend the rest of our lives proving you wrong. And uh, so that's how I'm going to approach this. So those of you that might be out there, you know, that are uh, some of my commission clients, no worries. I got this. And we're going to have your pieces to you and they're going to be amazing. Not to sound cocky, but they're going to be amazing. So um, I've got a good attitude about it. I'll just have to be, you know, realistic. And I mean, I will have to rest occasionally. I mean, anytime you have surgery, you've got to rest. So I'll have to rest occasionally, but I'm just going to keep pushing because that's all I really know how to do. Um, so one thing I wanted to share with y'all before uh, we get off here is, uh, you know, sometimes in your life you come up with situations like this. You come up with times where you're presented with a challenge that you can either just stop everything and be like, oh, this is terrible, you know, this is just awful, you know, and I, I can't recover from this. Or you can just push through it. When I was a teacher, I would tell my students, this is a challenge, not an excuse. So, and what I meant by that is, you know, we have to approach things as, as things that can be overcome, things that can be achieved, and that's the only way you can approach things, because the worst thing you could do is fail. But if you don't try, you will definitely fail. As Wayne Gretzky once famously said, you will miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I'm not going to let this slow me down any more than it has to. I'm going to keep on pushing, keep on being the composer I am, keep on being the uh, fitness person I am, and just keep on being the individual that I am. And I hope you'll enjoy sharing this journey with me. So since we are in Thanksgiving time, I'm very thankful to have the health that I have. I'm thankful to have this pathway forward into new things. And I'm very thankful to have music projects to work on because they're going to keep me motivated and keep my spirits up as I move through this process. For your Thanksgiving, I hope you get to spend time with family and friends. Don't forget that time is the most valuable thing in the entire world. When you give somebody your time, that is the definition of love. Because time is the one thing in the world that's irreplaceable. And when you agree to spend your life with somebody, like if it's your partner, wife, husband, whatever, if you spend time with your friends or whatever, you are giving them the most valuable thing you can give them. So give your friends and family some time this Thanksgiving and give yourself some time. It's the most valuable thing you have. So I hope you'll enjoy um, this journey. If you have any questions about the surgery, about the recovery process, or about my compositions, please uh, leave a... Uh, Comment below and I'll try to answer it as quickly as possible. And have a happy Thanksgiving. And as always, peace, love, and music.